All right, so in this video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. So this is a not gate demonstration circuit. Right now, the input is off and the output is on. The output is our load, the LED. The input is how we're controlling this, which is the switch, which is actually controlling whether the transistor turns on and off. So right now, the switch and the transistor are off, the LED is on, when I close the switch, the input, and now the switch is on, the transistor is on, now the output is off, the LED is off. So that's the basic premise of this switch. Not too complicated, but it's an unusual circuit, but you'll see similar circuits when you're building other circuits. So if you understand this, that's going to help you build other circuits. So we're using a PNP type transistor. You can tell that because the arrow is pointing in. If the arrow was pointing out, it would be an NPN type transistor. So there's uh, a bunch of transistors that start with 2N. Some are PNP type, some are NPN type. But as long as you have a PNP type transistor that starts with 2N, you should be able to substitute it no problem. But I'm using the 2N3906. So now let's get to the actual build. All right, so now to begin with, I leave these switches in the board. I'm going to leave these jumpers too to help guide uh, my positioning. This is an awkward circuit for me to make, so I need help with this one. Uh, little guidance, I should say. So we have the switches here. They're separated top from bottom. On the schematic symbol, the switch is separated left to right. So when you close this switch, it connects the bottom pin to the top pin. The uh, two bottom pins are always connected to each other. The two top pins are always connected to each other. So we're going to take the uh, resistor, the 10 kilo ohm resistor, and connect that to the base of the transistor here. So this is one reason why I'm using these jumpers here. They got this gap here. Makes it a little trickier to insert the transistor into the breadboard. But let's do the transistor before we do the uh, resistor. So we're going to need the emitter connected directly to positive. So we have that up here. This other positive connection is for the LED. So since this is a 2N type transistor, as I said, whether it's PNP or NPN, when you're looking at the flat edge, flat edge right there, this left one is emitter, the middle one is base, and the right one is collector. That's every 2N transistor I've ever seen. And so we want to take the emitter and put it towards the top. So we're going to put the flat edge to the left and connect it to where that jumper is. So we got the transistor position. Now we want the 10 kilo ohm resistor from the switch opposite side of our ground there to the base. So we'll take that now. Put that to the base, the middle pin of the transistor. So that's pretty simple. This is a PNP type transistor. So you need a lower voltage at the base than the emitter for it to conduct. It's like a diode. So PNP we got N-type material here, P-type material there. So with the lower voltage of about 0.6 volts or higher, you'll have conduction. And that's what we want when we close the switch. We're using a 10 kilo ohm resistor because we need very little current to turn the transistor on. It takes just a little bit of current to get the transistor to fully conduct, which is what we want. We want to saturate it, and uh, but 10 kilo ohms is enough current to do that. So now we come over here. This is another reason why I have this jumper here to help guide me because the diode, if you don't move the pins, there are two pins across. So looking at the schematic here, the longer pin here, the longer lead is the anode, shorter lead is the cathode. So anode goes towards more positive, cathode indicated by this line here goes towards the more negative side of the circuit. So you can see we got the red jumper here that goes to positive and so that's where we're going to put the longer lead, the anode. 
and here you can see that the collector of the transistor which is this pin because the flat edge is over here so when the flat edge is over there then the collector is down here you can see that's towards the more negative side of the circuit that's also where the cathode of the LED is so now we need a 220 ohm resistor where these two components come together there to go to ground and we'll do that right there and it feels pretty loose in there it may or may not have made a good connection but now we fully built this it wasn't too bad but it's an awkward circuit I'm not used to building a PNP transistor type circuit like this so it's a little unusual for me I needed these jumpers in position to help guide me and uh, the switch is wearing out on this power supply there we go thought we had it there we go but uh, now you can see the LED is on that's our output until we press the switch closing the switch now the LED is off so ultimately what we're doing is right now it's easier to think of electron flow in this circuit that's pretty much the way PNP transistors are you may even think of this is zero volts and this is negative five if if you want to if that helps a lot of PNP transistor circuits are like that you have a negative voltage here and the ground up there but in any case this side's more negative we got electron flow through the resistor and through the LED when the transistor is off because it's not conducting that's the only path but if we close the switch, I already talked about this, that'll allow current flow through there, turning the transistor on so that current can flow through there. When the transistor is saturated, it's much easier for electrons to flow through the transistor. In fact, it lowers the voltage enough when the electron flows through there that there's no path here at all. It takes at least 1.5 volt difference across the LED, whereas the PMP transistor will pull it directly to 5 volts in this case. It's an awkward circuit, I know. But uh, we're actually pulling it up, up too high for the LED. We got 5 volts on this side. That transistor pulls it up to 5 volts. So we got 5 volts evenly across here when we think of 0 volts on this side to 5 volts 